Hi and welcome to this week's Something for the Weekend. I'm Tony, sales manager here at Martin Lynch and & Sons and uh, just arrived at the showroom today and it's been a really quiet journey in actually in the car. I'm quite surprised because obviously we've got the, the repeater installed here, GB3 ML. Now there wasn't a huge amount of activity on there so I went to a few other repeaters, that was exactly the same. So why? Why isn't there more activity on the repeaters? Well, it kind of got me thinking, maybe you just need some more information on repeaters. So why don't we give it to you? Come and join me inside now. Okay, so what is the concept of a repeater? Well, the main concept of a repeater is basically to install a device to enhance communication between station A and station B. Now you may be thinking, why do we need to enhance station A and station B's coverage? Could be a number of reasons such as you may have low power devices. So station A maybe have a, a low power FM handheld transceiver, for example, and the same for station B. Now, if they're a few miles apart, it's probably not gonna work too well. And also there may be buildings in the way or you know numerous other obstacles which may interfere with the signal coming in, hence the need for the repeater. So by using the repeater, put simply, basically, the signal from station A will go into the repeater, be enhanced to a larger area, and then received by station B. Now, why might that be useful for us as radio amateurs? Well, let's be honest. In today's modern society, it's not always a perfect situation when we're driving around or out for a walk, etc., to be communicating in simplex form. We really do need to consider using repeaters more, I think because one, it will enhance the hobby quite a lot for you, especially if you're running handheld devices and you're new to the hobby and, and don't wanna or can't spend a, a huge amount of money on massive antenna installations, especially on VHF and UHF. It's also a great way to communicate if you're within a group. So you may have uh, local club members that you always normally have a chat with on the radio locally in the evening. And you know, why not communicate whilst you're on the way into work? You know, Dave might go and work in the Northwest Phil might go and work in the south, but you're all still within range of a local repeater most of the time. So, you know, why not use it? Take it into consideration that it's there for you to use and it's free of charge as well. Anyway, let's find out a little bit more detail with regards to how they're installed and who would install them. So let's get this camera off the tripod and we'll take a quick look at our repeater here, GB3 ML. Okay, so we have the repeater kind of tucked away and when we talk about installations of repeaters, obviously, number one, you're going to need an antenna, which we're going to cut to now. So you can take a quick look at the antenna that we use here at GB3ML. Now, you can't just go and use any old antenna. There are stipulations in place with regards to the amount of gain and antenna height, etc. And obviously, further details can be found on the relevant governing bodies' websites. And if you're interested in putting up your own repeater, we will put a link in the comments down below for you. Anyway, so obviously antenna, decent coax, a good quality coax, because obviously you're going to be operating on most of the time VHF or UHF. And then obviously we have our main unit here. So we do have it in a, in a rack mount. This may change depending on the location of your repeater site. And if we open up here, so as you can see, we use Yesu's DR1X repeater here at GB3ML. And it's a really simple solution if you want to put a repeater on the air and get it sort of up and running quite quickly. Now you will need a little bit of tech knowledge in order to do that, but we've got Gary. And also we've got a phone line here. So if you do need help, obviously Gary will be able to help you. Um, what else do you need? So you've got the antenna, you've got your repeater, now, in between that, you're going to need some cavities as well because the repeaters work on split frequencies. So you'll have one frequency for the incoming signal and one frequency for the outgoing signal. And with these cavities, it just keeps that separation in place. So you've got no interference through and fingers crossed everything will run nice and smoothly for you. Um, you're going to need a nice stable power supply as well. You know, don't forget these repeaters are on 24 seven most of the time. And, you know, when they are being used, you know, you may be running sort of 20, 25 watts and that can put a bit of strain on the power supply. So make sure that you've got a nice, stable and good quality power supply running on it. Obviously, we're using Mydell. 
Okay, moving on from there, I'm just going to close this. And uh, apologies for the, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the location of our repeat here, but it is within our, our sort of faulty fine section of the store. And you know, it's not all bad because you might just be able to pick up a, a unit at a very cheap price that will get you on the air onto one of our repeaters. Anyway, let's go and have a walk around now and I'll show you what kind of equipment can be used to access repeaters. Now, when it comes to equipment, do you need to buy the latest radio in order to access a repeater? No, not always, but sometimes you have to because when sort of, especially in the UK where repeaters first came out, they used to use a 1750 tone burst in order to access the repeater, i.e. wake the repeater up. Now, that's changed, probably due to the fact of our John whistling them up every hour or so. Um, so they now have a CTCSS tone in order to access them. And also that kind of helps again with interference from local repeaters and repeaters further afield if conditions change. Because I've heard a few stories of repeaters in the past sort of linking up and down the country. And uh, I'm sure you, <laughs> a few of you have got a few stories about those as well. I remember when I first got licensed, you could access two or three repeaters in a row at the time. So CTCSS, what does it do? Why do we need it? That's kind of it simply put. So it just basically, it's kind of a key to access that repeater for you. Okay, so handhelds. Now, I've got a handheld in my drawer. I'm sure I have, I've got, I've got one of these. It, it used to use these on the repeaters. I remember that I used to speak to, uh, to Bill and we used to have a great time on it. Now, this one here, for example, this isn't gonna work on a modern repeater. Not unless you find a CTCSS board and you want to install it yourself in the spirit of ham radio, obviously. But this one won't. This still just carries the old 1750 tone burst. So great radio if you're out and about walking with your friends. But other than that, we'll put it to one side. So Tony, you said behind you, I can use an old, an old transceiver, an old handheld. Yes, you can. So for example, something like this, an ICOM 80 or even another icon here, a T8, for example. Now, these are going back a good few years, but a good thing with these is they do actually come with CTCSS. So that is the key part you wanna be looking out for if you're looking at a radio now and you want to access a repeater, make sure it's got CTCSS. And even the same when it comes to mobile transceivers and obviously base station transceivers as well, because Repeaters aren't only on VHF, UHF, you know, there are 10 meter repeaters, there's 23 SEMs, ATV repeaters, uh, for example. So bear that in mind, CTCSS is the way you want to go. So let's get these out of the way and I'll show you some of the current models that you can access repeaters on. So for example, Yesu's FT4, just a nice small handheld. It's got the CTCSS function. You can input your memories by hand if need be and work the repeaters. Again, with the FT65, just pure analog. So if it's an analog repeater, you're gonna be getting in with these. Now, stuff like say, Yesu's FT70, for example, kind of changes things up a bit now. And this is where repeaters get a little bit more interesting. So it's not just a, a signal going in and coming straight out locally, but a bit of a larger area. So digital repeaters. Now, we could go on for hours upon hours about digital repeaters, whether they're DMR, System Fusion, D-Star, for example, All-Star. I know there's a, a huge group of All-Star users throughout the country, and, and that is a, a great, great way of accessing repeaters. So, briefly put, if you're using a digital repeater, a lot of the time these repeaters are actually connected to the internet. Now I can hear you all going, that's not true radio, Tony, it's not true radio. It may not be, but at some point there's still RF going through, whether it be from the handheld, the, the mobile station, for example, or the home base, going into that repeater. Yes, it's going down some uh, fiber lines, but it's also coming out on RF on the other side. And the beauty of it is, and now this is a great thing with repeaters that we need to bear in mind. If you've just passed your foundation license, for example, and you've been gifted a handheld, I won't say the FT4 because that one won't do it, but say the FT70, for example, that was your birthday present. And you're thinking, oh, this is great, but I've spoken to uh, 
little uh, jack down the corner and I'm kind of a bit bored of speaking to jack down the corner. Well, if your local repeater is a system fusion or an all-star repeater, for example, you can access that repeater and then talk throughout the world. Come out on repeaters in countries, you, you know, such as America, for example, you can come out any part of the States, uh, come out in Australia. You know, it's not an issue as long as it's a part of the repeater network then it is achievable. And you can be doing that from a little handheld. So, you know, don't knock repeaters. They're there to assist us and enhance our hobby, really. So, digital repeaters, big, big plus from me. Um, what more can I say? It's, you know, if you don't want to be driving around with a massive antenna on your car because you're a little bit self-conscious, for example, you can run a handheld in your car now and access a repeater, as long as you're doing it safely and speak around the world still, you know, and, and especially with the noise within modern cars when it comes to HF operation, etc. This is a great way to do it. And guess what? The repeater's helping you do it. So that's kind of a handheld range for you. Obviously, we've got offerings from the likes of Icon, which I'm going to show you actually how we access our repeater here at GB3ML with one of the ID52s and just show you how simple it can be. Um, what you'll find is the more basic the radio, the more program you're probably going to have to do because <laughs> obviously you're going to want to put a repeater list in. Now, how do I know what frequencies are about? How do I know which repeaters are about, Tony, in my local area? Well, if you look at this link here, this is the repeater book for the UK and for around the world as well. So you can look on this list, a kind of directory, and you'll find your local repeater, what mode it runs on, what CTCSS tones, now remember about those, that you need to access it. And who owns it? Who's the repeater keeper, for example? Which, you know, you may want to do, because you may want to put a donation into these guys. But we'll talk about that before we finish, anyway. So, quick rundown on some mobile transceivers for you as well. So, stuff like the FTM 500, the big head radio. Now, you've seen loads of reviews about this radio. This works, again, on System Fusion Digital. Um, we've also got Icon's ID5100, again, nice big clear display on this unit and full duplex, so you can actually monitor two repeaters at the same time. Now, let's have a look at that ID52 and I'll show you just how easy it can be to access a repeater, whether it's digital or analog. So I'm just going to go and find the ID52. We're going to pop outside and I'm going to show you just how easy it can be to access a repeater, whether it be digital or analog. Okay, so we've made it outside and as you can see the weather's changing a little bit from uh, this morning. And uh, why did I choose the ID52, I hear you say? Well, the reason is it's just very simple to use. Uh, I'm not a great tech guru, you know, at the end of the day I'm 70% more amateur radio operator and, that's, you know, a lot of you may be as well. So let's have a look and see how easy it is going to be for me now to access GB3ML with the ID52. So, as you can see, I've powered up the radio and we're in a mode here where it's telling me that I've got Harrow as the, the repeater. Now, that's not the one I want to use. Um, I haven't gone through the repeater list. And because I haven't got the repeater list to hand as well, how am I going to know the frequencies, etc.? Well, good thing with this, all pre-programmed, which obviously you can do with any other sort of brand of radio, but it does take a little bit more work. So I'm going to click on here. Now I see it says near repeater. Click on near repeater. It's going to use the GPS function of the radio. And that is an added bonus of obviously spending a little bit more on the, uh, the transceiver. Now I want an FM repeater. It's done a quick search and it's basically given me all of the repeaters and the mileage as well away from where we are. So I'm going to click on Stains Upon Thames. And now, if I do the PTT, press the PTT button, we should see the repeater open. This is Golf 2, Mike Lima, G2ML, listening GB3ML. This is Golf 2, Mike Lima, G2ML, listening GB3ML for any calls. Okay, now much as I said earlier, there's not enough activity on these repeaters. Most of us have got a handheld somewhere. Why not tune it into your local repeater and just have it monitoring? 
because you never know, there may be someone there wanting to give you a call. Now, earlier on I did say, who puts on repeaters? Who are these people that put repeaters up? Well, it's not only stores like ourselves, you'll also find there are repeater groups. These are guys that just love doing the install, the general setup of the repeater, you know, from working out the initial design all the way through to finding a location, uh, a live site and getting it onto air. Now, one thing to bear in mind with repeaters, who pays for them? The person who runs it normally. So if you do get the opportunity, and I know you'll see a lot of rallies, there be repeater groups, maybe holding a little bring and buy sell, etc. If you do get the opportunity, think about the, the service that these guys and girls are putting on for you. And you know, maybe just make a small note donation because it really does enhance the hobby, especially nowadays with the digital radio, you know, the price of broadband, etc. And you know, at the end of the day, repeaters, they're not that bad, yes. They've had their issues in the past and maybe still nowadays because of the introduction of cheap handhelds. But, you know, the more you invest your time into repeaters, the more we can concentrate on eliminating any of that. So take care and let me hear you on air. Thank you, Tony. That was interesting, wasn't it? I enjoyed that. Um, just to let you know that if you're around this Monday, in fact, even if you're not around this Monday, make sure you're around this Monday because I'm doing a talk at the Appledore Radio Club uh, in Biddeford, North Devon. Um, 7.30 for 8 o'clock at the Appledore Football and Social Club so if you're around even if you're not around just scrap everything come down to the beautiful seaside town of Appledore spend the day there and then come over to the, the radio club meet all fellow radio hams and listen to me for at least an hour going on about how wonderful the world famous ham radio store really is all right See you on Monday, 7.30, 8 o'clock, Appledore Football and Social Club. Have a lovely weekend, and isn't it sunny? What a beautiful day here in sunny Devon. ta -ra.